Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So today I've got the Syntec OBD2 pocket reader. We're gonna bust this bad boy open and if any cars come in today, I'm gonna plug it in. We're gonna check it out and if not, then when we get home, we'll plug it into our new 2019 BW Tiguan. We'll plug it into a 2013 GMC Sierra and uh, we'll just see how it reads older and newer cars and we'll just go from there. So I'm pretty excited to check it out. I wonder how the IM readiness monitors work. And uh, we'll just check it out and see what we think about it. If it's worth 25 bucks. All right, so, so far, I'm actually pretty excited, man. I just wanted to share the outside of this thing. It's freaking cool, man. Here's their little instruction booklet. And inside this is pretty interesting. They'll give you examples of what the actual code means that you're reading. So you'll see it'll let, it'll let you know if it's in the body, the chassis, the powertrain, or if it's a network code or U code, right? Manufacturer specific. And then it comes down into here what the other numbers mean. And if you don't have a cell phone, but everyone has a cell phone nowadays, but if you honestly wanted to and you didn't want to type it into your phone, it does have a booklet and it will explain to you what each code means. Now what I'm hoping is that when I plug it in, like that little C-Reader uh, 9001 or whatever it was, I hope that it actually displays the code and then tells you a little something. But if it doesn't and it just gives you the code, I'm still actually happy with that. So we'll just see how it goes. Nice. First car of the day, 1996 Chrysler Town & Country. Need to check it for readiness monitors and see if they've set. Let's see, key on. Yep. Okay. Come on, little Syntec. Fault one, P0106, does have a code. There's number three for IM, but the mill is on. Let's pretend that it's off because it's not on right now. I didn't see a check engine light whatsoever. Then we'll scroll, yep, IM, it's off. Bin, rescan, I guess it's not gonna do it because there's a DTC. Hmm. Wonder. Oh, there we go. Misfire, ready. Fuel, ready. CCM, ready. Cat, ready. Evap, not ready. O2, ready. Heater, not ready. EGR, ready. Okay, so to compare, we're now gonna plug in the C-Reader. All right, this is the, uh, I think it's the C-Reader 5 or C-Reader 4. And diagnose. See, DTC is one. It says there's one in there. Readiness complete, six. Readiness not complete, two. And that is correct. Uh, we saw that on the Syntec. So, let's read the code and see if it's the same exact one. <clears throat> P0106. Map. Pressure circuit range performance. Oh, okay. I am... Let's just check. EVAP monitor is incomplete and the oxygen heater monitor is incomplete. So they both read the same. I would say the C reader a little bit more user friendly because everything's kind of there in words. Uh, this has a very small screen, but you know what? I was able to get the same information. So 
25 bucks, not a bad deal. I think this is about 50. Okay. See the check engine light would normally be right here and it would be on, but it's not on, which is really weird. All right guys, so this should be interesting. 2019 Volkswagen Tiguan. We're gonna see if this little Syntec can even read readiness monitors on a brand new car. And then we'll wrap it up with our final thoughts. All right, so right now it's checking everything out. Let's go ahead and hit protocol. Read a brand new car. Okay, so let's see first. Should not have any DTCs. Fault one pending. P2. 440. So we're going to look that up because that's interesting. This vehicle should have no codes whatsoever because it's brand new. But how interesting is that? Okay, so now we will hit enter and exit. Let's go to I am readiness monitors. Scroll down, misfire ready. Oops. Fuel ready. All right, what the heck is this? If the engine control module, ECM, receives a pulsation signal from the sensor despite the ECM ordering the VSV to close the air switching valve, or if the ECM has not received the signal from the sensor despite the ECM ordering the VSV to open the valve, the ECM interprets this as a fault in the secondary air injection system and the code is set. All right, so 2013 GMC Sierra. Uh, just going to check this out again with a newer car and see what we can expect here on the Syntec. And then we're going to do some compare and contrast with the Sea Reader 319. <clears throat> All right, let's see. No codes. Cool. I am monitors now that we know how this works. Misfires ready, fuel ready, CCM ready, cat ready, uh, heater catalytic converter not applicable, evap ready, air not applicable. So, pretty limited, you know, tool to be honest for 25 bucks. Let me show you one that costs less than 20 bucks and where I think Syntec is lacking. And C reader is actually a better bang for your buck when it comes to pocket readers. But look, overall, if you don't want to order one on Amazon, you need a quick, down and dirty uh, pinch tester, <laughs> DTC tester, IM readiness. Yeah, man, it's cool. It's cool for 25 bucks, but uh, a little bit lacking on the tech side for for what you're paying. Let me show you one that costs less than 20 bucks that you can get off Amazon in two days on the same exact vehicle. All right, so same deal, 2013 GMC Sierra. We gotta look for the protocol first to show you the actual real-time boot up and everything else. So as you can see right away, we get a full screen list. So we don't have to go into any separate menus. We don't have to scroll through to see the readiness monitors or DTCs. It's all on one screen. DTC, zero, readiness, eight, incomplete, zero, and NA2, which you saw on the other one. Also, data stream count, so there's 50 things that we can look at there. Let's proceed. See, now on this one, you can go through, you can read codes, erase codes, readiness monitors, you got a data stream, you got freeze frame data, and then you got an O2 sensor test. We'll scroll down real quick. You also get onboard monitoring, EVAP, and then vehicle information. So, so far, for under 20 bucks, this thing is absolutely killing the Syntec, which costs 25. So, I know, I know. It's a review of both. I'm trying to show you a few different options here. We looked at the other Sea Reader 4 or Sea Reader 5 early on. Uh, let's jump back through this real quick. Let's just go to I am readiness status, and you'll see the type of uh, screen that this has for that. So already we get four things right out the same exact gate. We can look at four different things that are ready. 
We can scroll through and see our final four and everything. Okay, for the exception of those two that were uh, incomplete, which is not shown on the screen because it doesn't have anything to do with it. This one, we had to scroll through to figure out each and every single one. Let's go back. Let's go to data stream and see what it'll show us. All right, so see here, we can see the fuel for short term. We can see the load, electronic coolant temp, long term, percentages, map, RPM, spark advance, math, idle air, throttle body position, O2s. Alright guys, so look, in my opinion, for the 25 bucks that you pay, it's not a bad tool, okay? It does do what it says it can do. It can read, erase, and show you I am readiness monitors. But at a very basic, basic level for 25 bucks, and that was with the coupon and it being discounted. For this little uh, C-Reader 319 that we picked up off of Amazon, this thing comes in at under 20 bucks. You can see there's a lot more um, technical and vehicle information on here that you're not going to get on the Syntec. You also saw the C Reader 4 or C Reader 5 that had a little bit more information, a little bit more involvement, but overall, really not too much better or different than the C Reader 319. And that one comes in at around 40 or 50 bucks. I'll put links down in the description for both the C Reader products, uh, but overall, would I recommend the Syntec? In a pinch, sure. Is it my go-to pocket reader? Is something I'm gonna ju jump on right away to buy? Well, obviously I bought this one, but I bought it to do the overall review and, and see if it was worth it. Um, gonna give this one a thumbs down, man, I'm sorry. Uh, I think Harbor Freight could put a little bit more energy and effort into their pocket reader, especially considering some of the other competitors that are out there for a fraction of the price. They can do better, I know they can do better. That's all I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time. Doses.